We're looking at geometrically shaped stones that were collected on the western face of the Hummingbird Pyramid in La Mana, Ecuador. And these were collected over the period of the field season of 2014 and present some amazing features that we're going to look at that have consistency through the group and yet are not natural. The shape of the stones is the first clue that we notice and the quality of the stone as well. When you pick them up, they're very, very heavy and they have a sonorous ring to them, a metallic sounding ring that's quite impressive. But immediately when you look at them, you see the orange coloration, which has to do with the surface of the stone, which is quite different from the interior. And when you find a broken stone or you break one open, you can see the dark interior is like a basalt with very fine inclusions in it. And the exterior of the stone ap appears to have a kale and clay surface layer of cement on many sides of the stones. And there are patterns to the presence of this cement and it seems to have been used as a binding layer between adjacent stones in the formations. Here at the Hummingbird Pyramid, we find this construction style with interlocking shapes that look like crystalline pieces of a giant puzzle. And indeed, there are very different features in different sections that have to do with the functions of these constructions. These stones here have wear patterns on them that show of ancient surface and the layer of binding cement on the lower sides of the stones confirms that these were once part of a walkway. The walkway appears to have been three quarters of the way up to the top of the pyramid, so fairly high on the structure and we're looking at the collapsed section of the western face of the pyramid, the special kale and clay based cement that we keep finding between the stones on the walkways is found in much larger sections on the upper parts of the pyramid and is also found in whole plates that themselves are magnetic as well. So that's a fairly interesting feature. We have these two materials, the magnetic basalt and the magnetic kale and clay. Some of the most interesting stone shapes that we've found include triangular prisms that come in various sizes and have earned the nickname Toblerones for the chocolates that come in a box of the same shape. These stones are also magnetic and contain iron pyrite as well as iron and nickel, which are both ferromagnetic metals causing the magnetic effects that we're seeing here. There are these beautifully shaped triangular stones that have beveled edges and show an inconsistency in material as well. These smaller stones are identical in size and obviously belong to a walkway that had a pattern on it and hopefully we'll find more stones from this section. But it's fallen out of course on the western face of the pyramid and we've also got from the same area larger stones with the same exact angular shape only double in size and double in thickness and may have been part of that same walkway.
These large heavy blocks also may have been used in a walkway because we can see the same surface wear on the top sides and the bottoms have the same beveled edge with a much deeper form that has a parallel plane on the reverse side of the stone. And several of these are covered in the kaolin based clay cement binder which would have bound the stones to their neighbor stones. Edgar Cayce specified this type of synthetic stone as Atlantean firestone, and this corresponds very specially with the word pyrite itself and the connection with the word pyramid. Seen at 200 times magnification, the inclusions of quartz crystals and pyrite become plainly evident. As we pan across, you can make out white metallic shapes that are smaller than the pyrites and comprise nickel. Not quite as visible is the presence of iron, which with metal detectors we've been able to discern. Inclusions within the basalt stone matrix include quartz, tourmaline, iron pyrite, nickel, and iron. The nickel and iron inclusions are ferromagnetic metals, whereas the pyrite is a pyromagnetic and paramagnetic metal. This combination of features was selectively used and the presence of gold and silver in fine amounts has also been noted. Presumably these metals were collected during mining operations by the Ohm. While the precious metals of gold and silver would have been used in jewelry making, the pyrite and nickel which are also found in abundance below La Mana were also used, but in this case within the stones for their paramagnetic and ferromagnetic qualities. These qualities allowed these stones to convert energy of all different kinds into an electromagnetic field. The energy ranges that could be used included cosmic energies, earthly energies, vibrational energies, tectonic energies, as well as heat. Once again, we can see on these other sections of paving stones, we've got the exact same thickness and coloration of the kale and clay cement on the back, which has a high iron loading, which gives it a darker brown appearance in this case. And we can see, again, on the opposite face of these stones, the wear patterns that would be consistent with their use as a walkway. These interlocking shapes repeated in the walkway forms are highly reminiscent of what we see in the Bosnian pyramids, which they've uncovered hundreds of meters of walkways that show the same type of patterning. And yet, those are in sandstone, and they do not show the magnetic inclusions that we see here in basalt. So these basalts have this magnetic effect, which we can sense very well with neodymium magnets, and finds contemporaries in the advanced technologies of the stonework at Gunung Padang, which also displays the same mix of kale and clay-based cement and magnetic andesite. There are many stones that were found that have this amazing right angle cut in them, much like the stones we see at the Bosnian Pyramid in their walkways. And other stones have an L shape, some stones have slightly angular features, but these all appear to provide for stability to prevent tectonic disruption of the walkways. And 
the qualities of the kale and clay binder were such that they allowed permeability of water where the stones themselves that combined the walkway did not. So there were effectively seams within the walkway that could absorb water and it would percolate through the structure somewhat like a seep. And this idea is really reinforced when we look higher on the pyramid and there are sections of walkway that are comprised completely of this kale and clay cement binder material which we find between the magnetic basalts. This would allow water to collect in areas designated inside the pyramid for channeling rivers internally inside the pyramid. And this reflects exactly what we've seen in the Bosnian pyramids where they have a remarkable series of waterways, aqueducts, and the Ravne tunnel system was all specifically built at the level of the river so that the water could percolate through this porous stone and be used to create the high humidity that would allow HHO plasma to form within those subterranean tunnels. Materials experts studying the stones of the Gunung Padang pyramid in Indonesia have discovered very interesting micro fissures which cut across the natural crystalline makeup of the stone and suggest to them that these are unnatural stones. And the metal content of the stone at Gunung Padang is also elevated from natural levels, although on the surface this is not as notable. In the deeper layers, several scientists have noted that the quality of the stones changes with the earlier layers of civilization upon which were built consecutively one after the other in four stages. Many of the stones discovered here at the Hummingbird Pyramid in Lamana, Ecuador would also be categorized as andesites, but it really depends on the fineness of the grinding of the pulverizing of the materials that went into these stones. Those that were less finely ground appear to be more like the quality of natural andesite with larger inclusions, while some of the other stones have been much more finely pulverized, finely ground, and the powders that were used give the appearance of a basalt which is very black with only small crystalline inclusions. 